Hello, my name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Today I'm going to make a scene and uh, I'm going to use our Clarity card and a brayer and our Clarity blending mat. So let's just get started, shall we? The first thing I want to do before I begin is have a look at the blending mat. For those of you who are new to this, it's a cool piece of equipment and it's got lots of different little aspects. What I'm going to do is just tear my hills before I mess it up with ink. So I've got my hills torn. Then I'm going to take a piece of Clarity card, which is a coated stock. And what I want to do is just take some low tack masking tape and make a frame around the edge. Cool, this is filthy. Okay, right, so let's make a frame around the edge that's the width of the masking tape itself. So I'll just whiz around the edge. Right, and once we've got our, our frame worked out, then the next thing I want to do is um, add a moon. So I'm going to go to our Clarity Moon Masks and I'm going to use the large moon. I want a big dramatic moon here. So I'm just going to detack it a little bit because I'm working on coated stock and I want to just add my moon to the picture about there. Okie dokie. Right, next step. I want to put an undercoat of juniper. Juniper is a really nice colour from Adirondack. Uh, and I'm going to just use a light green ink pad and have a look at how I actually ink up the brayer and you'll notice that I'm just inking up the brayer, not on the edges. This is really key. So I'm just inking up here and I'm going to show you how to do a really nice, um, almost like a, an airbrushed sky. So what we want to do, I'm going to stand up for this, I'm just going to add my green there, like so. You can barely see it, but you'll see in a moment, I'm gonna run over the card, backwards and forwards like this, and add my color. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back into my mat and add a little more. So even though you, can, you can't hardly see it, it is definitely showing, look, you can see it here. So you go back to the mat, lift up and then transfer the ink. So let's just say we've got a really good green background. Now let's take a darker colour, let's take denim and you'll see here that denim is a lot darker um, and we're going to add denim to the green now. So off we go again and then we'll transfer the colour and you'll see immediately by going backwards and forwards, it changes the colour beautifully. Okay, so there's the sky. Right, now, if I wanted to make that darker, again, I can go back in and just add a bit more depth. Okay, I reckon that will do nicely. Good. But the whole idea is it looks airbrushed simply because I didn't have any ink on this end. This is the key. If I was right-handed, the whole thing would turn around. I'd put the mat over here and I'd just mirror image the whole thing. This edge would have to be clean and I'd come in from that angle. So because I'm left-handed, I'm working to my left. So if you're right-handed, then you just turn the whole thing round. Good. So now I've done that, the next thing I want to do is take a look at the, the land. Right, remember I tore the hills at the beginning. So what I want to do next is take a bit more of the blue, the denim. Let's reload the denim a bit. Right, I think that's a good idea. And then I think what I want to do is add a little bit more of the... Um, Juniper. Forgive me for going straight into the juniper with the blue. I know, but I want to change the colour a bit. Bluey green. That's more like it. It's called a blending mat for a reason. Right, so turn this round and what I want to do is make three, three hills. Let me just check this out. Right, that's the first one, like so. Right, 
this is going to be the first one and then we'll just build it up from there. So I've covered up everything. This is the darkest one. So most of the ink now here, right? So just go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. See, we can add a bit more. They are make that bond darker. Okay, nice. Now let's lift this up and let's make another hill somewhere else like there. Okay, so we'll lift another, put that one there. This is going to be lighter, obviously. So we'll do that. And then we've got a really light one at the back. So let's just move the hills like so now. And we'll just go over the top. And you just go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. Let's check. Yeah, there you go. So you've got all three hills, you see. Easy. And they're in place. Now let's remove the moon. Just get your fingernail in there gently. Yeah. Okay, just a minute. Da, 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 da. There we are. So then peel that off. We've got a lovely cracking moon. And then we could put this one back on its home base for another day. Flatten that a bit again. Cool. Right, now let's have a look. The thing to do next is polish this. Because we worked with Clarity Card, now's the time that we could polish this well. So it's already dry and we're just going to buff this lovely coated stock. So let's just polish this work now and at the same time you'll see it comes up like glass. Okay, so let's just do that. Good. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is take into the stamps. Now this time, let's just add a little bit more blue and a little bit more green to the blending mat. Because what I want to do, let's just spread those out. See now, if I don't lift my brayer, it doesn't blend properly. So you need to just lift your brayer to get the ink into the pores. That's it. It's not the brayer I'm interested in now. I want to use this ink on the blending mat to actually stamp now as well. So three things I want to do. First of all, large, large sapling tree down the bottom, smaller sapling tree at the top, and then a duck in flight. So I'm going to use my, my ink on here. Let's have a look. I don't want it so dark, you see. So I'm going to actually use the ink off the mat. I reckon that will work well. And then I'm going to just stamp the tree straight through the moon, making sure that the base is off onto the masking tape. So let's just stamp this nicely into place. There we are. Perfect. And then I'll take the second one. So you see, sometimes when you have a new ink pad or a dark ink pad, especially when you're working on coated stock like this, it, um, it can, the ink can be so dark if you're working directly from, a, from an ink pad. And so it's a good idea to use the blending mat as an ink pad. It helps control the amount of ink or the depth of color. So let's add another tree there and you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm covering up the dark hill. Here we go. So we'll just add this tree in the background. Okay, perfect. So we've got the two blue trees I like. And then we'll take the duck as well. Because these are silhouette stamps, this is working really nicely. Now let me just take some ink off the mat like so. Don't worry, I've got a plan here. And then I'm going to stamp my duck carefully there. Okay, just have to give it a little wiggle. Good enough. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Right, so this, you can tell, this looks quite, um, quite bland, doesn't it? But I'm going, to, I'm going to show you another trick. And the idea is to use a silhouette stamp as the coloured in version, if you like, and then we're going to apply the line art now. Normally what we do is we take a line art stamp, stamp that, colour it in. This time we've actually stamped the coloured in bit first and then we're going to create our own 
artwork, which is much nicer, much artier, don't you think? So let me just put this to one side. How do I clean this? Ultimately, I'll spritz this with water, wipe it clean, and then it's good to go again. Um, but it will stay here for days if I don't clean it. If I lent on that next week, I'd still have a blue hand. So it doesn't dry out, which is good to know. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to get it started. Let me just shuffle in here because this is going to be my downtime now, my nice relaxing. And what I want to do, for example, let's just show you, uh, I'll, I'll get started on one of the trees. I'm using a little black micron pen. And then once I get started, then I'm just going to spend as long as it takes and you can listen to some lovely relaxing music. But first of all, let me just show, show you what we're going to do. Uh, for example, on the tree now, every single leaf I'm going to outline, you see. So it's a form of really focused doodling, isn't it? And again, you know, with all this mindfulness speak, you'll find that this is very relaxing. And as soon as I begin doing this, I start, my shoulders relax. I start speaking more slowly. I'm very focused on the nib of the pen. It works really nicely. So I'm just gonna go around here like so. And then each leaf, I'm going to give a vein as well. Now looking at the bird, let's take a look at the duck because this is, this is really, the, he's the key character, isn't he? So let's do him now and then I'll go back to the trees. So I'm going to outline the duck very carefully and then I'll figure out, once I've done the outline, I'll figure out what I'm doing on the inside. See now that to me is actually important that I come through there because that will show me that wing. There we are, over we go. So as far as this wing goes, I would suggest that I probably want to come down like so. You see, the thing about all of this kind of doodling and focused zentangle, if you want to call it that, is that you have to break down larger pieces like this duck into smaller elements and then it becomes really easy to do. Now I'm one of those people who really feels that when I, when I doodle or I, I add a tangle, it needs to be logical for me. So for example, what I'm doing now while I'm doing the feathers is I'm actually creating proper feathers. And for shadow or for depth, if I wanted to, let me just add a few tail feathers here. You see, it's logical what I'm doing and I'm going to colour in his beak. And then for shadow, very often, the nicest way to apply shadow is just with dots, like this. It's almost like a dot matrix. So here, for example, this, this wing is behind the other wing. So if I add a couple of dots here, see, then it looks as if it's in the background. So what I'm going to do now is just spend a little time doing this and I'd like you to go and put the kettle on, enjoy a cup of tea and listen to some pleasant music while I finish the picture for you. I'll see you on the other side.
So there we are, you see? Oh, my neck. We've, we've completely transformed these bland blue trees and ducks. And the only thing I want to do to further define this is just take our heels and notice that I keep leaning on a piece of copy paper so that I don't spoil it. And what I'm gonna do now is just, I think what I'll do is, let's take all this off. Let's get, let's, let's remove the mask because now I want to just put the finishing touches to this. So I'm just going to carefully peel the masking tape off. I would suggest that we always peel away from the corners so that we don't catch this, the top surface of the card and then rip it. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. Now what I'm going to do is take my to lean on and I just want to, let's just, just, gently go across here. I want to further enhance this and I know this makes it quite stylized and but it's quite a nice graphic look. So we're just going to go into the hills like so and again exactly where the brayer did the work for us with the torn paper and that way we can just add, there we go, catch the bottom of the tree, jiggle 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 like so. And then my suggestion is that down in this lower, let's do some more furrows, said the farmer. There we are, look, we'll just jiggle through here. Nice. And then as it comes down towards the front, so it's tighter here, and it creates that illusion, look, that the front is closer. There we are, dead easy really. So jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. We've got our furrows in place for our fields. I'll leave those two like so. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just work my way round. So, for example, I'll start here and I'll just jiggle all the way round like an old photograph, just like a deck of ledge, you see, and I catch the bits that I'm doing. And you just keep your eye on the road ahead and round you go. So we've gone all the way around, nice piece of artwork, very pleasant, and here we have a nice card, and you can see, just to recap, we've brayed in that almost like a, uh, an airbrushed background using our blending mat, and then we've, we've stylized it and enhanced it with our pen. So it's very simple. Now, I want to show you something. I've already I've done this one before, but I want to just make a point. Here is a nice card, agreed. We like it, looks good, mount it, send it to a friend. You know, hello ducky. But I want to show you something. I take the same card and I mount it and I put it in a frame. It's identical, there is no difference. Look, if you make things to sell, then I would suggest that you can probably, having also, having invested in the frame and the glass as well, um, I would suggest that you probably make a lot more money selling this than you would selling a card. So if you do want some return on your investment, same time, same time invested, um, but how lovely does it look in a frame? And the other thing that I wanted to point out was, you know, when we make our art, this is my, this is, this comes from, I put it up on my wall in my house because I liked it so much. Um, and I own it, you know, I've owned my artwork. I've put my signature on it. I've put it behind glass and I'm celebrating it and I'm hanging it on the wall. And I think it's about time we started owning our artwork. Yeah. So sign it, own it, and if you can, sell it. Bring, brilliant. Um, we'll call that the SOS move. So there we are. Just another little blog from um, Clarity Stamps here in the UK. If you, if you have time, do go and visit my blog, barbaragrayblog.blogspot.com. Uh, I did a step-by-step, -step, if you'd like to see that. Uh, there's a link on, the, uh, on here and you can actually see uh, a shot, a slide by slide or a photo by photo, step by step for this particular project. And, uh, and why don't you subscribe to, to this channel? 
Uh, it would be lovely to see you every week and, uh, and I shall see you next week. Bye-bye now.